So today I'm going to give you guys a perfect example of everything that I was telling you in Wednesday's video. If you didn't watch Wednesday's video, I'll link it below. You should definitely take a look at it. I'm essentially outlining what I see as a potential fatal flaw or a huge Achilles heel in AI generated music. And that flaw in that risk is essentially that because it can create so much music in such a short amount of time, the chances of it committing copyright infringement on not only the music that it was trained on, but also just any other piece of music that exists online is substantial enough that it could cause companies to just not offer AI generated music because there's gonna be so many legal risks for people generating music, prompting their, their AI models to create uh, music from their models. So this is actually an example of what I've been talking about right here. I'm gonna play you this track in just a second. This is an AI track, but I'm gonna see if you can guess, I think all of you guys will, guess where it learned essentially this, uh, this song and what it's being inspired by and whether or not this could potentially become a copyright infringement case. I think it probably could, but of course that's for lawyers and judges to decide. But this comes from a website called Evoke Music, E-V-O-K-E, -E, and you can just go to their website, evokemusic.ai. This is actually a, a music catalog that has over 60,000 tracks, and I would say of all the AI generative music I've heard so far, this one stands out in being one of the higher quality ones, so it's definitely worth going and taking a listen to and checking out what they're doing, what these models essentially are capable of. But just take a listen to this one track. It's called 146 Punk Exciting Uptempo Acoustic Drums. So not a really creative title, but just take a listen and see if you recognize where it was inspired to write this song. Can't put my finger on it. It smells like something though, right? Hmm. Something like, uh, not, not adolescence and not adulthood, something in the middle, teenage something. Obviously, this is Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit. That's where it's getting it from. That's what it sounds like. It's not exactly just like what Nirvana did, obviously, on their record, but it is pretty, pretty close, right? And if you heard this, immediately you think of that song. So this is what I mean by having legal risks with AI music where I'm not sure how exactly this AI model was trained, whether or not it was actually fed music like Nirvana's. I'm, I'm hoping they didn't because um, I can imagine that it would be very expensive to go ask sort of the estate of Cobain to you know study it and use it for AI music. I don't think that would be coming very cheap. But this is the kind of stuff that I see happening. And this was a track that was right on the main page of this company's website. So it wasn't like I had to go digging to find this. It was actually one of the feature tracks right on their homepage. So, and some of you guys were commenting on that last video saying, well, what's the difference? Like human beings, we create so much music, we can potentially commit copyright infringement. Of course, that's always a risk. The difference though is an AI model can do it thousands of times per day, hundreds of thousands of times per day. So when you just have that number, the sheer number of tracks out there and it's spitting out stuff just like this, exponentially, you have a lot more risk for copyright infringement. So I'm really glad that I came across this because this really hopefully exemplifies and shows you just in a real example, the problem, the potential problem with AI generative music and you know whether or not these things can be solved. I don't know. Some of you guys had said, well, there's probably going to be insurance companies that can cover you know, uh, lawsuits because we have insurance companies that cover copyright, you know, infringements and stuff right now. Yeah, to a certain extent. But if you have a generative model that's basically cranking out 10,000 tracks a day, and let's say there's a chance of, I don't know, two or three even just in a day that could create a track like this. Like if you had an AI generative model and it was cranking out music like this, would you feel comfortable giving that out into the world? <laughs> I, I know that I wouldn't be. I would really go, oof, that's really close to something. So I'm not exactly sure how this company um, is dealing with that. I actually emailed them a week or two ago, seeing if they would want to come and do an interview with me. I haven't heard back yet. But I, this is the kind of stuff that these companies are going to have to start to think about because it's it's a big issue. It could be something that could essentially kill their entire business model before it gets off the ground and running. 
Um, so how it's going to get solved, if it can get solved, that's what basically we want to kind of keep our eye on and look to this stuff and see, um, you know, just basically being aware of what's going on in this world so that we're sort of prepared. So just want to share with you guys this quick example of it. Um, but definitely check out that video I posted on Wednesday if you didn't watch it yet, because I think it's something that we should start to just have a conversation about and think about, um, what we can do. So that's all I got quick video today. You guys have a fantastic weekend and I'll uh, see you here on Monday on my channel.